us now to talk more about Donald Trump's immigration speak, speech. We have Frank Sherry, the executive director of America's Voice, and John Fury, a legal analyst at the Center for Immigration Studies, who are both coming to us from Washington, D.C. Also here on set, we're joined by Bloomberg Politics, Sahil Kapoor. Thank you guys all for being here with me. Uh, John is in L.A. and will be chiming in for a second. But I, I, I want to start um, hearing from all of you on just a policy level. We'll have plenty of time to get into the politics. But, but can, can you both tell me your take on the, on the substance of what he proposed in his policy address last night? We'll start with you, Mr. Ferry. Yeah, the, the media has been demanding a lot of detail for the past couple of weeks, and they got it. This was a very long speech with a variety of provisions in it that, if enforced, would actually have an effect of reducing our problem of illegal immigration and open borders. And it's quite different from what we've been told and sold uh, by politicians of both sides of the debate for the past few years. The idea is that we can only have some sort of massive, comprehensive bill that few people will read and that enforcement will come later. But Trump flipped the script on that. And his proposal basically is we're going to put all these enforcement measures in place first. We're going to get a hold of our immigration system. And then we'll deal with uh, those who are here after all of that. And I think that does get us t closer to an actual fix on the illegal immigration problem. Okay, and, and um, Frank, uh, I'd like you to weigh in here because I know you have a very different view on the, on the actual policy. Yeah. Um, uh, let, let me hear from you what you think of, of the policy proposals themselves. Sure. Uh, I mean, this is one of the most hardline proposals we've ever seen from a nominee in, in modern political history. I mean, all the steps add up to uh, a, a mass deportation strategy that would drive millions of undocumented immigrants, most of whom have lived in the country for more than 10 years, out of the country, uh, it, it, either through a government uh, deportation where they'd be picked up by agents or local police and detained and deported, or uh, they'd be forced out because life is so miserable they couldn't work, they couldn't survive. So this was, this was a, a, a real far-right hardline proposal aimed at driving uh, 10, uh, 11 million people out of the country. So do you think we at least now, um, obviously we're going to get into the politics here in a second with John, but, but we at least have clarity. Do you think we at least know what's in his mind and where he comes down on immigration once and for all? Do you think that was achieved yesterday? Yes. I don't think he could have been clearer. I think over the last 10 days or so, he'd been raising a lot of questions and, and kind of making his policy hazy, making his rhetoric softer. And now we know this is the this is the Donald Trump we knew in the primaries. This is a revert to form. All the things that he campaigned on that worked so well with Republican voters, uh, deportations on the table for everybody. He's going to prioritize the criminals. Uh, legal status and citizenship are completely off the table. He's going to do an entry exit tracking system, and he's going to do e-verify to make it very hard for people who are here to stick around and find jobs. So this is the Donald Trump of the anti-immigration vision that took hold in the Republican primary, and not only with Donald Trump, but with the runner-up, Ted Cruz. So this is something that the party has to deal with. And there are a lot of Republican strategists, as you know better than I do, who are extremely nervous to the point of terrified about what this means for the future of their party. So yes, we have clarity. I think our guests will agree that one candidate now on the Democratic side is running on the most pro-immigration platform we've seen mm -hmm. in modern times and one candidate the most anti-immigration in modern times. This is a, a very stark choice. John? So Frank, so Frank Sherry, yep. let me ask you this question. Um, it, last night, at least when the speech, when he first gave the speech, there was some confusion among some of my colleagues in the media about whether he had in fact moderated at all in terms of substance um, because of the fact that he did not call for the immediate mass deportation of 11 million undocumented workers in the United States. Did Trump soften at all from his posture in the nomination fight or is this uh, just as hard as ever or maybe even harder? Yeah, as a matter of policy, he didn't soften at all. I do think he got a few sound bites from Kelly and Conway about let's not call it mass deportation. Let's just say we're going to enforce the law aggressively. Uh, let's not call it a deportation force. Let's say we'll triple the number of ICE agents. Um, so I, I do think that um, it was an attempt to try to sound a bit more reasonable. But quite frankly, I expected that it would have more rhetorical flourishes. I never expected that he would pivot away from his hardline policy. Uh, but I think uh, this, this, it ended up being much more of a Steve Bannon speech than a Kellyanne Conway speech. John, let me ask you the same question. Is there is your is it your view that Trump is now uh, is this a tougher 
set of proposals that he offered during the, the nomination fight or basically about the same? Or in some ways, would you see any sign that he's moderated at all? Uh, in many ways, it's a clarification of what he's had on his website for months now, his immigration platform. And what he did make clear last night is that the interests of the American worker are going to come first. Because right now here in Washington, the people driving the debate on immigration are primarily cheap labor lobbyists who want more immigration at all costs. And by the way, I wouldn't call this anti-immigration, as I heard a moment ago. This is anti-illegal immigration. We have a country made up of people who are very generous. We have the the most permanent residency uh, of any other country by a long shot. And at the same time, we doesn't mean we have to tolerate illegal immigration. Um, on the other hand, I do say, I, I would agree with you that it is a stark choice because right. I don't know where Hillary Clinton stands on any of these issues. Does she think the border in its current state is fine? I don't know. Does she think E-Verify should be mandated like uh, Trump has proposed? I don't know. So under her plans, I guess we would have some sort of mass legalization in the first 100 days. And then we would have more illegal immigration. That's not fixing the problem. But John, can I just so, add? You so, mentioned so, this so, is. So. This is, you mentioned this was about illegal, uh, you know, this was not an anti-immigration. You mentioned it was just about illegal immigration. Sure, there are illegal immigration components in, the, in there, but this is absolutely about legal immigration. The blueprint on Trump's website that you just referred to calls for a big crackdown on H-1B visas. It calls for a pause on issuing green cards. It raises the H-1B standard to the green card standard, which is absolutely a matter of restricting legal immigration, too. So this is an attack on immigration from all angles, not just illegal immigration. I will, I will agree with you that one of the main points that we've actually been welcoming a greater conversation of is the legal immigration angle. Um, the main thrust in D.C. isn't so much an amnesty. All these comprehensive bills had massive increases in legal immigration. And there was a Gallup poll that just came out last week. Nobody, not liberals, not conservatives, not Hispanics, only 15 percent of Mexican immigrants born in Mexico want increases in immigration. So I think people are starting to realize that there are a lot of people unemployed at all skill levels. And the idea of just dramatically increasing legal immigration because some lobbyists demand it is just, it's not going to fly. Frank, Frank Sherry, I know you're probably about to come out of your chair right now, so I'm going to give you the last word here and let you respond to John. <laughs> Look, I mean, Hillary Clinton is in favor of comprehensive immigration reform. A Gallup poll came out just the other day that said, or a, I'm sorry, a Fox News poll came out and said that 77% of the American people think the 11 million undocumented immigrants should be given a chance to get legal rather than round up as many as we can. Only 19% say let's get rid of the undocumented population. So Donald Trump is speaking to that 19%, but he's not speaking to the broad majority of Americans who say, can't we figure out how to be a nation of immigrants and a nation of laws? Can't we figure out how to have legal channels that work and enforcement that works so that we can actually make sure that people here assimilate, but at the same time, make sure people come in the future legally? Well, there's broad support for that. Unfortunately, the far right and the Republican Party is the tail wagging the dog right now. If it were popular, it would have happened under President Bush. If it were popular, the bill would have passed under President Obama. It doesn't because the American people are saying... All right, guest host prerogative no. here. I'm going to I'm going to get the last <laughs> word on all of you guys because Fox News has a poll out that says 77% of registered voters are in favor of setting up a system to legalize immigrants who are in the United States legally. Presidents of both parties have tried